everybody who has decided to tune in tonight. Good evening and welcome. Hi. Um, what the heck are we going to do tonight? Um, maybe we could do a Moon of Jewel. I'm not sure. So I, I, um, I might have to cheat something there to get it there. Oh, we get a bathysphere. I didn't realize we had that. That's kind of cool. I wonder what I do with that. I have a bunch of mods here and I don't know how anything works. I have been uh, completely oblivious. Oh, look, we got a submarine. Ooh, we should take that out there to uh, to Leith, right? Uh, do, 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 do. What's this? Oh, we could have uh, some crew in there. Oh, yeah, nice looking crewed submarine. Uh, we have another. I like the look of that. Maybe I should actually line these things up. I've no idea if this is going to work, but I like the idea of that. And of course, I need little uh, wings at the front as well. Now, I wonder if this thing spawns in the water. <sighs> mm -mm. Well, this is pretty bitter. Ah, uh, okay, this does not spawn in the water. So, uh, and also the vessel is overpressurized. I wonder how well it flies. Uh, I did not expect it to fly quite as well. Why is it... Oh. Why is there no sound at all? Have I shut off the sound? Oh my god, there it go, totally works! I think this submarine is a little more buoyant in the air than a realistic submarine. Let me tell you. This is... Yeah. Sound is working there for you, that's good to know. <laughs> And apparently, I only have things on one side, but these little solar panels on only one side are sufficient to power these giant things. Okay, so I wonder if I can turn this whole thing around. Let's let's do a fly past the tower. Oh yeah, look at that's what's happened. It's put the stuff in the rope. My god, this thing turns so well! You can see actually I had a previous ship attempt here, so. Uh, yeah, let's do a victory roll. Yeah, it totally works! This isn't nearly as crazy as my craziest and most Kerbal spacecraft ever, which was a nuclear submarine propelled by nuclear explosions. It, it does seem to want to pop its nose up all the time. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do a fly past to the control tower if I can manage it. Come on! There we go. Now I do need to just miss it a little. Oh, 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 oh! No, it went. It it's very unstable. Okay, we're gonna fly past. Yes. Creating that uh, sound and making them spill his coffee. I wonder if I can land on top of the thing here. Okay. And maybe if I give it just a little bit of thrust. <laughs> this is so. I think whoever designed this mod probably hasn't put in correct values for the mass of these things. <laughs> I, I kind of think we should just leave that one there and then cheat the other one to, to lathe to see how well it works. I mean, wow, that is something really special. And it does tells me, it tell me it's overpressurized. I think what we should do is just cheat it out to Jewel and have it fly around inside Jewel's atmosphere. That seems like a good plan, right? Uh, uh, I'm just going to put these back on because why not? Now the only thing is to make it fly near Jewel, we're going to need some sort of um, rocket propulsion, right? Uh, now we do have interstellar mod, but the only thing is I think a lot of these things don't... Oh, look! Traveling wave reactor engine. Oh my god, I gotta do a video on some of these things. I wonder if we have a nuclear salt water reactor, because that... Oh! Direct cycle nuclear turbojet! Oh, I do like the sound of that! Why is it not yellow? Because I 
haven't had time to fix the mod. Anything that starts with the word nuclear or turbo is good. This does both. Warning vessel is overpressurized. So I wanna move these onto this stage and I wanna make sure, now what is it using? It's doing thermal from the atmosphere. So this should work if I just activate it. Oh yeah, nuclear engines. Let's see how much thrust these are generating. Oh, the generator is offline. I need to fix that. Okay, so we're generating four, 40 kilonewtons. Uh, 400. So this thing should just work. Yes! Excellent! <laughs> now... I wonder how fast I can get it. Let's, let's, let's flat... Oh, oh, it's a little unstable here. It's porpoising a bit. I suspect because it's such a long thing. That's a first, says everybody that's just come in. They weren't here five minutes ago when I had another submarine flying around and accidentally landed it on top of the vehicle assembly building. Uh, let's just show. Uh, check. Cheats, uh, just in case. Hack gravity is not enabled, but, you know, let's just do infinite propellant and electricity and, you know, stuff. I wonder if we can get this thing into space. Let's just try this. Switch it to switch mode. Oh, that's atmospheric. Swi next propellant. Liquid fuel. So we can heat liquid fuel. There we do that. Switch propellant. Okay, so now we get two things running on nuclear on propellant. We get 200. So we're, we don't have quite as much thrust, but we should have thrust that works all the way into space. Question is, can I make it work? Um, let me just see what's my vessel status. Thrust to mass ratio is 1.36, so this thing should be able to get into space if I just keep the nose attitude high enough. Hey, hold on to that. So I'm just going to bring it upwards and hopefully we'll take this to orbit. And yes, sure, I could go into interstellar mod and give myself a bunch of antimatter and other things and or I could just cheat. I, th I think I like the idea of just cheating and flying out to Jewel to be honest. What happened to Galileo Conquest is that every single weekend is family weekend and it's very hard for me to work on Galileo Conquest and then like uh, last night, well Sunday night I tried to record my whole thing about quantum key distribution and I, after three hours of working on graphics, I was like, screw this. And then last night, I did it again. I recorded an alternative version. You know what I've realized we don't have? So we don't have any crew on board this thing. Okay, you know what? We're going to go back. Revert flight to space plane hangar. What memes do I like? What memes you like? Okay, that, that seems like a very odd question. I'm sorry, I'm a classicist. I am a big fan of all your base or belong to us. Like, if you don't know that, then you are not coming from the right part of the world. All your base are belong to us. All your base are belong to us. All your base are belong to us. 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 Okay, so we crossed the boundary into the Julian sphere of influence. And now we're going to thrust to slow down, and this might take some time as well. So suffice to say, we've got a lot more talking going on. The mission, I don't know. I think, honestly, I'm one to, I, I built this submarine using nuclear turbojets and flew it into space by accident. So actually, yes, yeah, so this interstellar mod extended includes a direct air cycle thermal turbojet. Have you heard exactly how bad aircraft nuclear reactors were in terms of crew radiation? No, because um, that would all be classified. I have seen what they were like. Ooh, look at that. Do we actually have this thing making eclipses? I gotta see this. Look at that. We get some... something here. 
I'm guessing that's lathe, right? Oh, look, it makes a shadow! Oh, how beautiful, huh? Somebody hacked the shader to include that. Oh, reusable... The thing is with all those things is that I do kind of like them, but it, it can be really hard to just make all the episodes when people expect them. And I do kind of like playing Galileo, but there's always so many other things that I want to be doing right now. Like I've got these, all these games. I want to play Galactic Civilizations 3, for example. And I haven't had a chance. It's really kind of sad. I, honestly, I actually want to play some more No Man's Sky. Again, haven't had time. Okay, so we're going to do some slowdown here. Would the sh sub be thermally shielded for duel? Well, this is what we're going to find out. Yeah, I want to actually play Starpoint Gemini Warlords a whole lot more than I do. I wouldn't say No Man's Sky is awesome. It is a very flawed game, but it can be very beautiful. And it can be really cool. It can also be full of a lot of boredom. And actually, my favorite way of playing No Man's Sky right now is just this rock-hard survival mode. There we go. That should slow me down. Maybe I should need... Let's ignore max temperature. I don't care. I don't want to burn up because that's always just so disappointing. Okay, point things prograde. Yes, yes, Alofit showing off by how he's so many hours ahead of California. Let me tell you, there's only four time zones behind California in this world. I kind of like where I am. It lets me uh, chill out and get yesterday's news for a little longer. Yeah, I've turned everything around, so don't worry. Am I looking to the SpaceX doubleheader this weekend? Yes, I am. Now, some people were asking, I've seen a few people asking on Twitter, is this the first time a space, you know, organization has launched so many spacecraft so close together? And the answer is no. Because back with uh, Vostok 3 and 4, they were launched back to back one day after another. Not only that, but they were launched from the same launch stand, right? So, 24-hour difference. The idea, of course, was that they wanted to have them rendezvous in space. Yeah, this would have totally melted by now. I don't know what this vessel is overpressurized warning means. I'm going to be clear. Whoa! Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Time zones are awful to implement. I have a, I had to write code to do that, and it was quite complicated. So now that my velocity has dropped, I can confirm that I am absolutely suborbital. Yes, suborbital, suborbital. I gotta slow this thing down. I think what will happen is um, I'm actually going to turn off stability control and do that. So the aerodynamics in reverse is kind of messing me up right now. That's fine. So I'm going to switch these to back to atmospheric mode. Atmospheric mode and then I'm going to see if I can fire these engines. Okay, now do these generate thrust? These are actually generating thrust. That's pretty cool. And in fact, it's enough thrust to slow me down here. It's enough it's enough thrust, I think. Yeah, I'm actually flying now. And now the question is, can I? get some sort of stability going on here. Yes! Come on! Yes! Okay! Now we get some stability going on. I want to set course towards Lathe and then come out of the... Oh crap! Come out of, I was going to say come out of the atmosphere. 
This is nothing like the Avengers. Hold that attitude just for a second. There, look. Now we got it. Now we got it. Right, you see that? I'm gonna hold that attitude. Now. And I'm heading the direction I need to go. Just keep that there. Keep that there. See? Totally got it under control again. And I'm going the direction I want to. And the thrust is actually increasing, which is a good sign right now. See, now you can actually take the screenshots that make it look like I knew what I was doing. See? No, there's no way for me to shift weight forward because I designed this. But I didn't even think it would fly. Like, I, I didn't check center of mass or anything like that. What, what do you think I was doing here? I was building a submarine. Do I have a favorite X series plane? The X-15. The X-15 is absolutely the most insane X plane ever. I love it in so many ways. And every now and then, every time I go to places and they have like a list of astronauts, I'm always like, you're missing Joe Walker! He was an astronaut, he flew the X-15 to 100 miles and therefore he is an astronaut. He was an astronaut before many of the people there. And I, obviously I like the X-15A, uh, AB2 or whatever, right? That's pretty cool. My favorite ketchup brand is obviously Kynes. Come on, what do you think? I'm some sort of weird Muir Glen type? No. Yeah, X-15 is just so insanely amazing and special. We, you know, it is the thing, a thing of beauty. Somebody needs to make an X-15 Lego model. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I would love some more space hardware like the Lego Saturn V. Obviously, I mean, it, it's hugely different from the design that was originally posted. So, you know, it's pretty cool. We're not really doing real rocket science, and I'm brute forcing many of these encounters. Okay, where is Leith there? One hour, 45 minutes. Okay, so we need to fly in towards where Leith is. Look at that! Oh! Beautiful! And then where is... Where's my target? There we go. Yeah, Quindar Tones basically was a way to, you know, share the the lines with, with data and speech. And the speech would come and it would be, it would have a, a tone at either end, which would say, turn on the data and then turn off the data. That was the thing. Man, this is a nice looking descent here. Other than the persistent rotation, which is kind of annoying. This is the astronomer's visual mod does look very pretty, other than the crazy strobing that we had to deal with elsewhere. Oh, and it's getting unstable. Again, it's unstable because I never checked this stuff before launching, did I? Okay, I should probably start firing these engines, right? Oh! Well! A successful landing, albeit without my, um, stuff. <laughs> there! Well, um, I kind of misjudged the landing there a bit. And for some reason my nose is sitting high in the water. Broke off everything that mattered there. <laughs> Love you guys! Love you guys! Fly safe.